Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The two Eagles balloon successfully lands and achieves records. The EPA denies petition demanding action against leaded avgas. And Jazz Aviation and ALPA reach an agreement. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. The crossing of the Pacific Ocean from Japan to the North American continent by Troy Bradley and Leonid Tuktaev concluded with a water landing about four miles offshore near La Poza Grande in Baja, California. The recovery team worked with Mexican authorities on retrieving the capsule and equipment. Subject to ratification, the Two Eagles team has surpassed both the distance and duration records for gas balloons. The team flew a distance of 6,646 miles and stayed aloft for 160 hours, 38 minutes. The mission control team expressed thanks to Governor Susana Martinez of the U.S. state of New Mexico for facilitating contacts with authorities in Mexico that played a vital role in the recovery effort. Albuquerque Mayor Richard Berry was deployed with the recovery team in the Baja area. The city of Albuquerque welcomed two Eagles pilots, Bradley and Tuktaev, back to Albuquerque with a celebration and press conference when they returned on Sunday. Mayor Berry said, quote, they helped put Albuquerque on the map, end quote. The Environmental Protection Agency has denied another petition by environmental groups asking the agency to immediately determine that leaded avgas poses a threat to public health. In its response to Friends of the Earth, Physicians for Social Responsibility, and Oregon Aviation Watch, the EPA stated that it takes the issue of lead emissions from aircraft seriously and is continuing to investigate the extent to which those emissions may pose a hazard to public health. The agency says it has been monitoring emissions at 17 major GA airports and found levels to be below the National Ambient Air Quality Standards for lead at 15 of them. Further airport monitoring and analysis of the data is ongoing. The EAA reports that in its letter of denial, the EPA indicated that it was delaying the rulemaking activity towards a possible determination that aircraft lead emissions pose a hazard by two years. After the break, labor and management really can work together. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. It's nice to report some good news about an aviation labor management relationship. Canada's Jazz Aviation and the Airline Pilots Association have reached an agreement renewing their collective bargaining agreement for a period of 11 years. The two parties reached an agreement through direct negotiations. The current collective agreement covers approximately 1,500 pilots employed at Jazz Airlines. 
The new collective agreement will run until December 31st, 2025. Jazz Aviation is a contract carrier for Air Canada under the Capacity Purchase Agreement. Jazz Aviation serves 73 destinations across Canada and the U.S. and operates approximately 800 daily flights. Every Tuesday, we look ahead to some of the most interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. One of the area's most colorful events of the season is the annual EAA Ski Plane Fly-In that will be held on Saturday, February 7th at the EAA Air Venture Museum's Pioneer Airport in Oshkosh. This is a fly-in that looks forward to a snow-covered runway. If you happen to be in Abu Dhabi this weekend, you won't want to miss the fourth consecutive edition of Abu Dhabi Air Expo, which is an international exhibition for general aviation. It will be held on the 8th through the 10th of February at Al Bateen Executive Airport in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. On February 19th, the MBAA will hold its regional forum at the Palm Beach International Airport in West Palm Beach, Florida. This regional forum incorporates exhibits, static displays of aircraft, and education sessions in a one-day event. After these messages, White House UAV flyer says it wasn't his fault. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we've summarized some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Let's see. You crash a UAV on the White House lawn at 3 o'clock in the morning while inebriated. Now you blame the UAV manufacturer because this UAV brand has a record of just flying away? Good luck with that excuse. The 2015 USA Indoor Radio Control model airplane F3P team plans on competing in the World Championships in Poland in March. They need financial help to make the trip, so check it out at www.teamusaf3p.com. It's something worth supporting. Here's some more good labor management news. The Allied Pilots Association has ratified a five-year contract agreement with American Airlines. The new contract provides a significant pay raise for 15,000 American Airlines pilots. If you're operating an aircraft with a TMG model TAE-12501 or TAE-12502-99 engine, be on the lookout for a notice that may affect your engine. The FAA is issuing a new airworthiness directive for the clutch assembly. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. Some of history's most iconic airplanes will be highlighted on display and flying at EAA AirVenture 2015 during EAA's 70th anniversary commemoration of the Allied victories in World War II. Victory in Europe Day on May 8, 1945 marked Germany's unconditional surrender to the Allies. The EAA is currently pursuing a number of representative aircraft examples from the European Theater of Operations. Victory over Japan Day was on September 2, 1945 in the U.S. AirVenture will once again feature the CAF's Tora 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 Air Show recalling the December 7, 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor.
The EAA is working on securing the appearance of the actual interstate cadet training plane that's generally recognized as the first aircraft in Pearl Harbor to be attacked by Japanese planes. The airplane was flown that infamous morning by instructor pilot and future WASP Cornelia Ford, who escaped a strafing attack after landing. Most Air Venture attendees will hear and see a living history lesson, but a few others will relive it. Well, that's our program for Tuesday, February 3rd. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember to join us every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news, along with a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.